Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton, and today we're going to take a look at how a for each loop can cause hidden allocations. This is not to make your app go 10x faster, super memory efficient, 3000, none of that. Uh, the idea for this video is coming from Twitter. Somebody asked me with a link to the article if the article is incorrect and it was describing a boxing effect that was happening with the for each loop. This video is more about understanding how can you actually explore and come to the conclusion that yes, indeed, there is boxing that is happening here, which is causing a memory allocation. If you're enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments section. Don't forget to check out the description. I have a C Sharp course that is out. If you would like to know C Sharp as I do, I highly recommend you take a look at it. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Here uh, we have a project. I already have the program open and the service. Uh, there are only two files, so we don't really need to be taking a look at the solution. Uh, the program contains a benchmark and hopefully everybody knows what uh, benchmark.net is at this point. We have a global setup which creates a list of 100 elements. And as our baseline, we're using link summation. And just to remind, this is not about summing numbers. The summation is just an operation that goes in between the for each loop. I can no longer remember if in the introduction I said for or for each. So if I said for as apologies, it's about the for each loop, right? I'm a little bit dyslexic. What are you going to do? But anyway, uh, the focus is the for each loop, right? So we have the enumerable over here. And the important thing to understand is that we're working with a list. So we're passing a list down behind the enumerable interface. The question there was that the list is a complex object that is going behind an interface. There shouldn't be any boxing here. However, boxing is not happening at when you pass an argument to the function. Boxing is happening at the for each loop stage, and we're going to take a look at it in just a second. Uh, for some other test cases, we have just passing a list down to the function, which shouldn't cause boxing. We then try to use generics in hopes that the compiler can help us. We then use a pattern matching. So we say that whatever the collection is coming in, can we match it against the list and then perform the work? We then have a sum list fast. So this technique is going to be used inside link. And again, we will re-arrive at this point. We then use sum list fast and we don't really need to re-retrieve this list of integers in this unsafe mode. If we can actually do pattern matching with the results over here, it's not that much faster than the sum list fast where you're having to do or getting the collection over here as unsafe. Anyway, uh, so these are not the point. The point is, is that the looping in the sum link is super fast. So they're somehow avoiding this allocation and are going mega fast. The enumerable version where we're putting the list behind enumerable is slow and we're getting the allocation. The list is eh, moderately fast. Uh, the sum generic over here is still causing the allocation. So it is not much better than just passing it behind the enumerable interface. The sum pattern brings us back to where we were just with uh, passing the list. So actually checking that something is of correct type can reverse most of the damage if you're depending on the enumerable interface. And then the other two, you know, if you're using code like this, you better be writing the most performant application ever. Otherwise, you know, if you're like, oh, I just want a fast loop here, yeah, don't, don't bother with that. Don't use those statements. So uh, the allocation over here, what is happening? How do you find out that there is an allocation? So first thing that you need to understand is the concept of syntax sugar and that C sharp has two compilation stages. So during the first compilation stage, you get rid of most of the syntax sugar. And then the second compilation stage is actually compiling code down to IL. So in writer, you can take a look at low level C sharp code. And I'm sorry that I cannot zoom in on this. Maybe I'll do a little bit of movie magic. But the important thing to note here is that when we're looking at the desugared C sharp code, we don't even need to go down to IL instructions. We see the get enumerator function being called here. This get enumerator function gets us the enumerator of integers. 
very very similar names if uh, you know you're not native english speaker you might not see the difference between i enumerable and i enumerator the first time you see them so uh let's drop down il we just know that there is an i enumerator over there whatever that means we're gonna open up i enumerable and we're gonna see that this contains the i enumerator get enumerator function and this is what you're going to be forced to implement if you're implementing this interface back to the service we're now going to go to the list and on the list what we're going to search for is the get enumerator implementation so control f search get enumerator so that is where we're using the get enumerator and here is where it's implemented so we see three implementations for this and Two of them are interface specific. That means if I am using something along the lines of this, so collection.getEnumerator, I'm using the list specific implementation, which is this one. And if you pay attention to the color coding over here, this is light pink, this is purple. Light pink, enumerator, which gets returned from here, is a struct, okay? So when we're looping over, uh, where is this service? the list over here the enumerator which is fetched for the for each loop is indeed a struct and doesn't cause memory allocation so if we come back to the list if the list is hiding behind a let me go back a couple of times to where we had the enumerator definitions if the list is hiding behind the enumerable interface the struct gets boxed up in order to be able to fit the interface so this is the point where the allocation happens if the list is hidden behind an enumerable interface because that is going to be the specific implementation that is being used. And when we're saying, look, pass a generic, which may look like this, still here, what's going to be called is this enumerable specific implementation. And if what we're using is just the enumerable, because that is the other implementation over here where this enumerator isn't gonna have your regular values, it's just gonna have objects, you're gonna have boxing for each value that you're returning. So this is going to be double trouble, which you don't want. And maybe not double trouble, like more like uh, trouble squared. So to quickly summarize, it is that the enumerator implementation for the list is a struct. If you're calling a method that is specifically implemented for, for the enumerable interface, that struct is going to get boxed up. For a list, you get the struct as is. So again, if we can take a look at this not call a collection, collection, get enumerator. This is going to be this list of integer dot enumerator type, right? If we take this interface over here and we cast our collection before we actually do this, the get enumerator type changes and now we actually have the enumerator of integers and that enumerator instance hiding behind an interface is what is causing the allocation. And that's that. Hopefully I haven't rambled on for too long and you get a little bit of a better idea on how to explore. Again, if we go over here and you actually want to see the boxing operation, you bring up your IL code viewer and right over here is where you can see the boxing instruction. So again, I'll try to zoom in in the editor. Whereas if we're taking a look at this method, uh, there is no boxing instruction over here. All right. So uh, you've taken a look at that. Uh, you're like, okay, yeah, man, I can see the allocation over there and I can see how when we're using the generic type, uh, it is still going to defer to that uh, enumerable interface uh, method implementation. For the pattern, uh, yeah, okay, I can now understand, and uh, sorry, I'm scrolling all over the place. I can understand that the pattern is alleviating most of the pain, but how can I actually find out, uh, well, uh, that the code like this exists? And I don't have a good answer for you otherwise, other than you have to look under the hood and maybe the way that you can stumble upon this is say, oh man, I'm trying to think of some kind of fast way to write this. Uh, what is the de facto standard way to do this in C Sharp? And some link. So you have an existing way of doing something and you're just saying, okay, uh, this link implementation here let me take it as the ba baseline and let me try to make something faster than that so the first time you're probably gonna fail 
and uh, then you're gonna say, all right, uh, let me actually do a little bit of research. You're gonna decompile some, you're gonna go into some, and here you're gonna see, oh, it is trying to get this span and it's doing some additional malarkey or uh, <laughs> I shouldn't say malarkey. It's doing some additional generic constraints on the generic uh, type parameters that are being passed down here. The try get span here is interesting and it's working on the sons uh, on the source <laughs> on the source. Let's see what's happening over here. We're doing a little bit of type comparison. If your type is an array, you just get it as the array and you can get that as the span. All good. If you have a list, you actually have to get the underlying buffer from there. And that is what this is going to do. And it's going to get it as a span. And then the reason that this is going to be faster overall further down the line is because once you're getting a span, you're getting an indexable array. You don't have a generator, which is producing like the enumerator, which is producing the next and the next value. And again, if we take a look at this low level C sharp code over here, we're going to see that we have a for loop over here instead of having a I enumerator with a while loop where we say, call this function, produce the next value. Let's take the current value, add it here. We're working with an array, which we can look up by an index. That is all I have for you today. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how you can explore these types of questions. First of all, take a look at the code at the lowered stage. If those two versions are pretty much the same, take a look at the implementation of things under those calls. Once you get to that place of difference, you can even go further by saying, okay, I see how they're different here. What is another thing which is really similar to it? And you take that thing and you say, okay, let me put them all against each other, see what's faster. If this is faster, you can say, huh, how come uh, that uh, technique over there isn't used in these two places? And maybe that technique is in no way related to this thing and uh, you pinning these uh, points against each other was completely wrong. And then now you know, and you can move on. Not gonna keep pretending like there is uh, some kind of scientific method to exploration. Just try a bunch of shit and, uh, you know, don't give up. <laughs> As always, if you enjoyed watching, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description. And if you would like the source code for this video and my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. I'll be very happy. And a very big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You helped me make this work. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.